Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today we're gonna to be talking about this, which is the SE Escape and Evasion Kit. And what we'll do in this video is show you the contents in the kit, talk through some of the details of the items, and then I wanna to talk to you about how you can adapt this kit to make it useful for whatever your particular needs are, whether it's everyday carry type items or it's survival items for when you are out in the woods. So here's a look at the kit. As you can see, it's like a wallet style. And when you open this up, that's what it looks like inside. One of the things I liked right off the bat about this kit was everything is nice and organized. It's not like you open it up and things are kind of falling out all over the place. The real thing that has movement is the uh, fire still here, but you know, you put that in and fold this down and now it's nice and organized. SE does note on their website that, you know, if you're actually gonna use this as an escape innovation kit, this is to keep the gear organized, but don't just keep this in your back pocket because if you, you know, are captured, if you're in like a military situation, let's say, uh, you don't want to have just this sitting in your back pocket because somebody's going to find it and take it. So the idea is keep the gear organized in this and then take out the gear and put it on your person if you're going to a situation where you really need an escape and evasion kit. So the other thing is just to know that you can use this thing as a wallet and then as, as I'm going to talk about in the uh, later portion of this video, how you can reshape this thing into different types of kits and organize different types of gear inside. Okay, looking at the kit on the far end, you can see we have some Kevlar cordage, then we have a button compass, then we have a uh, ferro rod next to that. We've got the SE arrowhead up top there. We do have a um, non-metallic handcuff key included, obviously non-metallic, so it's not easy for someone to, uh, to discover. We have some rare earth magnets, that kind of tubular thing right about there. Um, and that's for uh, kind of rough navigation if you lost the compass. And then below that right here, let's see if I can point at it, yeah, right there, is the uh, ceramic um, blade basically for striking the ferro rod. You could use the edge of your arrowhead, but obviously that's going to, that's going to dull it up. So it's a non-metallic um, uh, blade there for striking your ferro rod. And then you also have the, uh, the signal mirror, which do note it has the hole in the middle, just makes it easier to actually uh, know where you are um, reflecting light if you're trying to signal somebody off in the distance. In addition to everything I just showed you, you also get these four fish hooks and um, then you get all these survival cards. And so there's lots of information on these as well as some floss that's actually in one of these. So let me go through a rundown of these cards now. Here's a look at the cards and um, I'll give you the information that you're looking at here and then we'll flip the cards to the other side because most of these have information on both sides. So let's start in the top row. On the far left we have information on camouflage. Next to that we have information on basic traps and snares. And then next to that we have actually a clear card. I'll just pick that up. That's got information on it and that underneath it is a card with dental floss in it. So you can see right there you've got another form of cordage that's actually included with this uh, with this kit. Moving down to the bottom row, we have information on fire building and how to use rare earth magnets. Next to that, we have information on ground signals and Morse code, and then uh, escape innovation tool concealment tips on that last card. Flipping the cards over to the other side, up in that top row again, we have information on escape innovation movement. Next to that is determining an approximate distance across a river. And then we have that same card. It's just a clear card. So uh, same information that we were just looking at before. That does have ground to air signals. It also has um, a lot of information for um, navigation using a map and scale and things like that. Down to the bottom, we have basic information on navigation. And then next to that is some information on the kit. And then just some general tips. And then the last card again is E&E &E tool concealment tips. And that's continued on this side of the card. Sometimes when you're making a video, you have a concept of where you're gonna go in the video, and then as you start making the video, things change, and basically that's happened to me. So my thought was I'll give you an overview in this video of the kit uh, from SE, the E&E &E kit, and then I would talk about some changes I would make to make it a survival kit for my personal use. And um, But I thought rather than just talk about that, let me disassemble this kit and make it into the kit that I want to actually uh, to show you. So let's call this part one of a two-part series on the SE Escape and Evasion kit and in the next video I'll show you the gear that I'll take out of this kit and what I'll put in to make it more useful for my, you know the uses that I have. Uh, what I can tell you is that um, the kit is going to run you around $67 on Amazon. If you buy just the wallet, it's going to run you around $33 to $35, depending on where you pick it up. Um, it's well-made gear. I mean, everything SE makes is good quality. That's why they don't have 10,000 items. They've got a smaller number of items because they really invest time and effort to make sure it's good quality gear, whether it's knives or kits, things like that. So... Um, 
As far as an escape and evasion kit, I'm not in a field uh, where I need to think about escape and evasion all the time. Um, but I can, you know, looking at the information they give and looking at other escape and evasion kits, I think there's, you know, a good base from my my research, I would say, um, on how this could be useful. Um, there's a lot of items in here that, that would make sense in an escape and evasion kit. So again, like I'm not a pro in that field. I'm much more of an outdoorsman into survival, everyday carry, that type of stuff. Um, what I also can tell you though is that uh, one of the most underestimated things, and I've said this in probably quite a few videos, is um, I'm always looking for more fire options or at least a couple ways to start fire and then um, also some sort of covering. I was talking to a rep from SC the other day and just saying, hey, if there's somebody who could either find a company who would make or locate somebody who makes a um, smaller um, mylar blanket that you could put into a kit like this, that you could fit into an Altoids tin, that would be a huge win because most of those mylar blankets are too big to put in a kit like this, but you know, they, I have a video and I'll put a link at the end here to, they really do reflect heat back to your body and then just having some sort of kind of tarp-like material or tarp-like uh, item to keep weather off you is a huge deal if you're in a survival situation. So um, yeah, I think that's something I would love to see SE lead, you know, uh, in, on in the future coming up with that uh, smaller mylar blanket that can fit to this kit, can fit into an Altoids tin um, as well. So let me just share something that stood out to me and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, this kit, as someone who doesn't have extensive training in escape and evasion, has these cards that have good information to kind of teach you some things when you are in an escape and evasion situation. I'm wondering, on the other hand, for somebody who needs a kit like this, you know, somebody who's uh, serving in the military and could be in a situation where they need escape and evasion techniques, are they already trained in that? Are these reminder cards? Is it the best use of the space? That, that was just kind of jumping out to me. Um, and again, like maybe maybe you have training in escape and evasion. You're like, yeah, absolutely. You need those cards because it's such a stressful situation. You need to be reminded of what to do. Um, I'm thinking, could you put other items in there that would be more useful than the uh, than the cards? But let's hear your thoughts on that. Whether you just have an opinion or some thoughts, or also if you have you know expertise or training in escape and evasion, leave a comment in the comment section so we can you know get the discussion started on that topic. I guess the bottom line for me is I really like SE gear. Uh, the gear that I use from SE works well. I haven't had any issues with SE gear over the years that I've used it. Um, and this kit is a another good example of why people really respect them as a company and what they are, uh, what they're designing, what they're making. Um, you've got a cutting option in here. You have cordage. You've got uh, an opportunity to catch fish if you're in a situation where there's you know a pond or a stream or something like that, and there's fish there. Um, you've got a signaling device to get somebody's attention. I mean, there's just a lot of core items if you're in a bad situation that could really help you uh, affect self-rescue. So that's that's definitely a win of this kit. And I am definitely looking forward to pulling out some of these items, putting some of my personal items in there, and showing you how I've restructured this kit. And again, we'll talk about that in part two of this escape and evasion kit video series I guess we're kind of building together. So let's hear from you now, whether you have experience in escape and evasion as far as training, whatever it might be, or also how would you reshape this kit to make it a different escape and evasion kit, or how would you reshape it to be you know, your personal survival kit for when you head out into the woods. So leave a comment in the comment section and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, over the, uh, the next handful of months while I put together part two of this video. Thanks as always for watching the videos here. I want to ask you to like, comment, and share if you could do that for me. And uh, if you are subscribed, click that little bell so you can get updates and notifications when uh, new information comes out or new videos come out from Everyday Tactical Vids. As always, I want to remind you we're on other social media outlets like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. And I look forward to making part two of this video, and we got other videos always coming out. So like I always say, more videos coming soon. Take care.